Hey what's up guys, today we're going to talk about Sucrose and emphasize why she's such a broken unit. While many people know that she's good, as a general Anemo support, a good 4 star that has access to powerful support artifact sets and weapons, a point that is oftentimes overlooked or undervalued is just how strong she is in certain meta comps where Sucrose is literally the best option, even outshining in certain specific teams other Anemo characters like Kazuha and Venti who are two of the best characters in the game. The reason for this is in part due to the swirl buffs that came out in patch 1.6 and also because of what Sucrose has to offer through her kit and her ability to swirl non-stop with her normal attacks. In fact, while Sucrose as a support can be ran on really low investment, just swirling enemies and buffing your team, which we'll talk about in this video, she can also be ran in a taser team comp, which I've made a few videos on previously, but Sucrose's power level in that team is insane and second to none. Because of that, I feel like it's a good time to talk about how good Sucrose is and make an updated guide or slash build on her, since my old video was made before the swirl buffs in patch 1.6 and I didn't really mention taser at all, so it is outdated. And also we're getting a shower rerun soon who's a character that oftentimes will want a sucrose on his team So I feel like it's a good time to make an updated build and also talk about why this character is so OP And so with that initial information out of the way Let's talk about why sucrose is broken and how to get the most value out of your sucrose Now before we begin I want to give a thanks to prime gaming for sponsoring this video as if you have amazon prime You can actually get a bunch of free game rewards in many different games through prime gaming And obviously genshin impact is included in this as of right now You can get a fragile resin and some mora as well as a bit of ores and i'll have a link down in the description below to get you to this page and then once you're here all you have to do is click on the claim now button and then after that you'll have a code here that you can just copy and then once it's copied you can basically redeem it like any other code so i'm just going to go to settings go to my account right here and then paste the code and uh yeah there you go we got it now if i check my mail all the rewards will be there and so yeah i've included a link down below that you guys can use to claim these rewards with that being said let's get into the video first of all regarding her talents she is just a strong anemo support her skill and her burst allow you to displaced enemies and potentially group them up depending on what you're fighting but on top of that she'll also greatly buff your damage as an amplifying support this is why she's especially good in reaction based team comps like a vaporized team for example where she will give you an insane amount of elemental mastery through both of her passives her first passive will give elemental mastery to whatever reaction she swirls 50 of it for eight seconds and then the second one will also give even more elemental mastery to all of your party members when she uses any of her abilities equal to a percentage 20 percent of her own elemental mastery this is why stacking elemental mastery on her is so nice, but this is also part of the reason why she can be such a good low investment support. Now there's a few ways to build and gear your sucrose, which I'm going to talk about in this video. Basically, you can either go low investment or high investment, both of which having their upsides. Now the thing is, with Anemo supports like sucrose, slapping on a Verdescent Venera set, even if your stats on them aren't that good, is enough to make her very useful. The reason for that is because the 4 piece set gives you a 40% reduction, as I'm sure you're aware, to any element you swirl. Because of that, running her with any element elemental dps except geo or anemo that don't work with the set will greatly buff your team's overall damage by reducing the resistance of opponents on top of that this set also buffs your damage by giving you 60 percent increased swirl damage and 15 percent increased anemo damage bonus which is a nice bonus for your sucrose on top of that you can buff your team even further if you choose to run her on the thrilling tails which is typically the best support weapon now we'll talk about thrilling tails versus sacrificial fragments a bit later in this video when i cover weapons but just know that giving 48 percent attack to your carry especially with someone like Shangling, who can snapshot the buffs for all her pyronado, can give your sucrose an even stronger supportive role. And what's really nice about this type of build is you can keep her low investment. All you need is a level 1 Thrilling Tails and just a Verdescent Venera set, ideally with Elemental Mastery, but just the set itself and your passive talents makes her good enough to be a very powerful support character. Also, something I wanted to mention quickly is regarding your talents slash talent priority, they're not something you have to level as a pure support, as all it will do is increase your sucrose's own personal damage, and for example, like leveling your normal attacks really won't give you that much more dps as your damage even as an on-field auto attacker comes from your swirls mainly but if you're gonna level your talents you can prioritize your burst and then your skill and then your normal attacks although as i mentioned you can keep them very low level unless you just want your sucrose to do a bit more now where sucrose goes from really good to broken is her role in a taser team which is one of the best meta teams right now as you can see from the damage on screen while it's mainly my off-field supports doing a lot of damage they are greatly enabled by sucrose and on top of that sucrose can also deal good damage through her swirls that got buff in patch 1.6. In fact, the buff to the swirl reaction is actually pretty huge, especially if you are number one, stacking elemental mastery on your sucrose, and number two, leveling her up, since it is a transformative reaction, meaning that it scales on your level and your elemental mastery. The overall team DPS from these teams is nothing to scoff at. It's honestly one of the best teams in the game, especially considering it's only four stars. It doesn't need Bennett or anything. And while you might be afraid because this team doesn't have a healer, you're running Beidou and Sing Chu. Sing Chu who gives you healing from his rain swords, but especially 
especially, Beto and Sinkju give you about 70% damage resist, depending on your talent levels, which is insane and will make you rarely need more healing than Sinkju's Rain Swords. I do want to mention though that while the damage reduction is absolutely huge and for most content, you'll honestly feel super, super tanky, the current Abyss has a corrosion mechanic that makes this team uh, take a lot more damage since corrosion goes through damage reduction and chips away at your team's HP. That being said, I managed to fully clear it multiple times without any healing other than Sing Chu, and the damage that this team does definitely makes up for that weakness. Although I do want to point out that this Abyss is by far the worst for that at like taking damage since corrosion is so annoying. That being said, you can always run a healer if you need it or another solution is Prototype Amber, although I personally hate this weapon because the healing it gives is minimal, but it can be a solution to corrosion. That being said, even when I casually play this team and don't dodge perfectly, I still manage to clear the Abyss very easily because of the insane amount of damage that this team deals, as you will see in the showcase later in the video. But obviously, once the Abyss changes and corrosion is no longer prevalent, this team will be even more dominant. Although I do want to emphasize that this team is really good even in this Abyss. It just takes more game knowledge to run with lower healing, whereas with every other piece of content, the damage reduction you gain is honestly insane and more than enough. And so that's basically the intro to this video, the main section on why she's broken. She can fit any team and buff your damage really well, while also being able to group enemies through her skill that pushes them together, and her burst that's kind of annoying but can displace enemies depending on what you're fighting, but isn't as reliable as a group as like Venti's burst or something. And she can also be ran in those teams at very low investment. Now on top of everything I just said, another few reasons as to why I believe Sucrose is such an insane unit, in case I haven't convinced you I guess, is number one, while I said she's okay at low investment, even to get her high investment, it's not as hard as some other characters. Now I know getting Elemental Mastery on the main stat can be rough, but the thing is, once you have Elemental Mastery main stats on like your Sands and your other pieces, you don't have to optimize your substats as much, as you don't care too much about having that much energy recharge or attack or crit or anything, as you're mainly just looking for really good main stats, and once you have them, you can stop worrying about your Sucrose, whereas some other characters, like for example, you know, Hyper Carries, you really want to min-max everything. On top of that, since she is a 4-star, not only is she more accessible, but she also has accessible constellations, and while they're not needed, some of her first ones, like mainly her first constellation, is really really good as you gain another charge of your skill. On top of that, she's an emo, and an emo characters in general are insane, and can fit a variety of team comps. But with that out of the way, let's now go into a bit more information on how to actually build and optimize your Sucrose, and focusing on some very common questions that I get regarding her weapon choice, like Sacrificial versus Thrilling Tales, when each are better, and also talk about just generally how to build her. In fact, the first thing I want to say, if it wasn't clear in the intro, is you really want a 4-piece for Descent Venera set. Even early game, you want to rush this set as fast as possible. Even if you have terrible stats on it, at least you'll be able to decrease the res of whatever you're fighting, making it the best set for her. For your stats, it's pretty straightforward. You just want Elemental Mastery on literally every piece, on your Sands, on your Goblet, and on your Circlet. Now, if you're running Sucrose with like Shao and you really don't care about her damage, and you're just using her to give particles to, you know, your Nemo carry like Shao, it can be viable to go for more energy recharge so that you can use your burst more, although it's really not that needed, but that can be a niche build to go for. In general though, stacking Elemental Mastery on literally all of your pieces is the main thing you're looking for, and then energy recharge on your substats can be very nice as well if you just want to use your burst more often. Do keep in mind though, and I haven't really mentioned this so far, but your burst is nice and can help displace or group enemies and can deal a okay amount of damage, especially because you can infuse it as you can see right now, but the infusion I've found to be quite inconsistent and not the strongest ability overall, but it can be nice to use. Now next up, regarding Sucrose's weapons, there's mainly two really good options. My personal favorite, just Catalyst in general on pretty much any support character, is the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers, as this weapon is absolutely insane and you don't have to level it at all, keeping it at level 1, sacrificing your Sucrose damage, but greatly increasing whatever hyper carry you're using, especially when you refine this book to R5, and increase the attack of whichever character you switch into by 48% for 10 seconds. This is especially good with, as I mentioned, hyper carries like Shao, who really want attack, or characters who can snapshot the buff, meaning they keep the buff for the entire duration of their elemental burst. Think of someone like Shang Ling or Beidou, who can really utilize this Thrilling Tales very well. Another really good option, and potentially better depending on how you use Sucrose, is Sacrificial Fragments, that gives you a ton of elemental mastery and a chance to reset the cooldown of your skill. In fact, while this goes up at Refinement 5, at Refinement 1 it is a 40% chance to reset the cooldown when you damage an opponent with your skill, and it can occur once every 30 seconds, uh, but obviously once every 16 at R5. What's nice about this book is the extra particles you gain from your skill and the damage you will also gain through the elemental mastery that your Sucrose gets and that she transfers to the rest of your team. Now in general, even for reaction teams that want elemental mastery, Thrilling Tales tends to be more damage if you are using it correctly, but this can depend on the team you're running. Now if you're running Sucrose with some characters who don't scale with attack, 
back or don't want this thrilling tales that's fine and i know it can take a bit more i guess brain power or game knowledge to use this book as you have to think of who you're switching into after sucrose you don't want to just switch into your bennett and then buff him you really want to be buffing whoever you're using as a main dps in general though 48 percent attack as a support that you're giving to your carry is typically more than whatever damage you can be giving to your sucrose as a support character the exception to that though is if you're running her in a taser team when you're running her as the on-field auto attacker giving her elemental mastery buffing her swirl damage and her passives will give you just a ton more damage to your sucrose which is when i recommend sacrificial fragments the most now thrilling tales can still be a good option and viable if you don't want to level your sac frags but for a taser team that is when i recommend using this weapon furthermore since sacrificial fragments gives more particles to your team as you get another charge on your skill basically through its passive which can be nice for generating more particles especially if your team wants more energy or you're running other anemo units do keep in mind though that if you don't need those extra energy particles even with another anemo unit like shao if they have enough energy recharge then going thrilling tails will obviously still give them more damage also i wanted to point out while i mentioned her c1 being really good in the earlier section of this video it's the main one you're looking for the other ones aren't that important your c2 is nice as it increases the duration of your burst by two seconds and your c6 gives elemental damage bonus to whatever you infuse in your burst so it can be very nice in something like a taser team but as i said absorbing elements with your burst is inconsistent in my findings and so the c6 can be nice but isn't really needed also for her c4 while it's not great for a support sucrose it's pretty useless for support sucrose if you're on field auto attacking with her in example like a taser team it is quite nice because it reduces the cooldown of your skill which lets you spam it more and the other constellations aren't that amazing once again the main one you're looking for is c1 and then if you want to go further to six it can be nice as well all right now lastly but one of the most important sections is regarding sucrose's teams while i talked about how in this video there's two main ways to play her i actually want to show you what her teams look like first of all as just a generalist support she can fit so many different teams in fact in any reaction team that wants elemental mastery and an anemo support you can fit sucrose in as an amazing option for example the main reason why toma is actually played with hu tao is because you can run him to apply pyro on enemies and then swirl that pyro with someone like sucrose to greatly buff your hu tao's damage because of that a team like this becomes really good any reaction team you can think of pretty much that wants an anemo unit you can put sucrose in. A child Shangling comp, for example, or just a Shangling team in general. Shangling with Sing Chu, as in the national team that you guys have seen time and time again, where you are using Sucrose to swirl and greatly buff your team's damage. Other than just reaction teams, with characters like Shao, when you want an Anemo battery, Sucrose is one of the best options for the particles she gives you from her skill and her first constellation if you have it, or sacrificial fragments if you need even more. Although typically I do run Thrilling Tales for even more damage to Shao. Lastly, one of the main reasons why I'm making this video and updating my old sucrose guide is for the taser teams that i've already talked about in this video in fact sucrose is just insane here i don't want to repeat myself but she acts as the on-field auto attacker dealing an insane amount of damage through her swirl and through the buffs she gives you with the verdes and venera set and her passives i do want to point out that sometimes it can be a bit inconsistent to both swirl electro and hydro depending on your rotation and the enemies you're fighting although through your multiple swirls and just the insane amount of damage that every single character in this team gives you it shouldn't be that big of a problem Fischl has insane amount of off-field damage so does beto through her burst and her carry when you switch into her and fischl also generates particles for your beto making them have really good synergy with each other and also not needing too much er on her since you can swap into her use your counter and catch all the particles lastly your sing chu synergizes in this comp by using his rain swords paired with beto's burst and fischl's oz all of which dealing massive amounts of off-field damage while your sucrose is auto attacking and that is how the taser team works a bunch of bursts paired together enabled by sucrose's auto attacking on field making for insane amounts of damage while you can run other characters like barbara kokomi or even chi chi as a healer in a taser team which i can only really recommend against enemies that have corrosion if you really need more healing you do lose out on a lot of damage compared to sucrose these other taser teams are also very good but not as strong as the solid sucrose taser team and i also thought i might as well mention that this sucrose pokemon team or sucrose ketchum is really good but very hard to play and it's also very unique and not really the point of this video so i'm not going to get into it right now but do know that sucrose is someone who enables this team to work very well with the summoned creatures the pokemon of every other character but i will probably
probably make a separate video on this team as it is a very peculiar team with a difficult and unique playstyle. All right, with that being said, now what I'm going to do is go into a DPS showcase or at least a floor 12 clear with Sucrose. My Sucrose is going to be on the Sacrificial Fragments level 90 that I just leveled with a four piece Verdescent Venerer and a lot of Elemental Mastery. Do keep in mind, she will get a lot more damage if I level her to 90, but I just don't have the resources right now. Also, all my other characters are going to be on four star weapons as well, just in case you're wondering. And with that being said, here's my floor 12 clear. And so yeah, overall, I really believe Sucrose to be an essential character to basically everyone's account. She's a really good 4-star, one of the best 4-star supports, which is why I believe her to be broken. Being that versatile Anemo 4-star that she is, having a catalyst option that can be very good for supports, good artifact set, good everything. And then on top of that, even if you have 5-star supports like Kazuo or Venti, that yes, can outshine her in a few situations, she can also enable specific teams, niche comps that they can't, like a Taser team or the Sucrose Ketchum team that I mentioned briefly, but I'll talk about more in another video. And so that's that's why I believe as a 4 star she is quite broken and someone that is vital to basically every account, a character that you definitely want and want to build, especially when you also consider the fact that she's very good at low investment. With that being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm gonna now go work on my Shao guide, which should be out soon, so stay tuned for that, as many new banners are coming and I'm really hyped, but also very tired, so I'm gonna end it there. I hope you guys enjoyed, and with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.